Do you feel like your lens is inadequate? Do you see other people's lenses and think, I wish mine was just bigger? If so, you might be suffering from lens envy. In a study that I just made up, four out of three filmmakers all are suffering. Don't worry, we've got the cure for you. So let's talk about the difference between a cheap lens and an expensive lens. On a cheap lens, you're gonna get a lower build quality. This is gonna be cheaper plastic, and the lens part might not even be actual glass. It might just be a nice piece of plastic. Whereas when you get an expensive lens, you're going to be getting heavy duty, sometimes weather sealed lenses that have heavy glass that's really, really good for optics and makes your image just look better. That better glass is going to be much heavier. So depending on what you're doing, you might want a more inexpensive lens for traveling, but if you wanna get the best image quality possible, you're gonna to wanna to get a more expensive lens with better glass. The more you spend on a lens and the better quality it is, is also going to give you a better focus ring. On cheaper, inexpensive lenses, that focus ring can be really touchy, can't really let you do more fine-tuned focus adjustments, and it might even be noisy. But the more you spend on a lens, the quieter it's going to get, the smoother it's going to get, and usually the bigger it's going to be to allow you to move it fairly easily. Another thing you get when you get a more expensive lens is usually a lower aperture, which is a bigger opening to shoot through, which lets more light in and gives you a smaller depth of field and will blur that background to get the bokeh effect that you want. So typically the cheaper lenses don't go down really low in aperture, and the more you spend, you're gonna get a lower aperture. If you get a zoom lens, a cheap one will have the aperture change as you zoom. So when you're all the way wide, you might be able to shoot at an aperture of 3.5, but when you're all the way zoomed in, maybe you can only go down to 5.6. When you get a more expensive lens, usually that aperture is constant. So whatever the lowest aperture is you can shoot at on the wide angle, you can also shoot at that when you're fully zoomed in. Next, the more you spend on the lens, meaning the better glass that's in it, so you're going to get better color and optics through that lens. You're going to get better results when you have a more professional grade set of glass in that lens that you're using. Next, using a more expensive lens can also make you have a sharper image. No, not that store in the mall that has all the weird gadgets and helicopters, but a sharper image that you're looking at either in a photo or a video. So. When you look at a side-by-side -side of a cheap lens and a more expensive lens at the same focal length, the one that's more expensive is usually going to have a sharper, crisper look to it. Higher-end lenses like the L-series lenses from Canon also have some weatherproofing. So if you're going to be out shooting in the rain or in some other kind of element like sand, you're probably gonna wanna spend more on a lens so that water and sand and other debris don't get into your lens, into the gears, into the focus ring, and mess it up. The more you spend on a lens, you might also get image stabilization, which is a little IS switch on it that will stabilize your lens either for photography or for video. When you're handheld shooting video, you're gonna want an image stabilized lens to just help you that much more when you're recording. Lenses from companies like Canon sometimes have ultrasonic motors, which will actually autofocus faster and quieter than other lenses. So be on the lookout for those when you get up in the higher models. And lastly, the value of a lens sticks with it longer than that of a camera body. So think about these as an investment and don't be afraid to buy them secondhand or used from a camera store. So that wraps up this video. If you enjoyed this video and you wanna learn more about different camera gear that I recommend that you use to start shooting videos, just go over to diyvideoguide.com gear. There's a free seven part video course that'll walk you through different budgets of gear if you have $150 all the way up to $10,000, what I recommend you end up getting to make your videos. So check that out at diyvideoguide.com gear, and I'll see you in another video. Peace.